तव कथा तप्त जीवन कविरीडित कलमशापह श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती ते भूरिदा जना टुडे इज दि होली डे ऑफ स्वामी तुरियानंद जीज बर्थडे स्वामी तुरियानंद जी वॉज वन ऑफ द सिक्सटीन मोनेस्टिक डिसाइपल्स ऑफ श्री राम कृष्णा एंड ही वॉज ए यूनिक टाइप ऑफ डिसाइपल होम श्री राम कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ सेड ही इज द करेक्ट टाइप ऑफ द योगी डिस्क्राइब्ड इन द भगवद गीता सो वॉज हिज ग्रेटनेस एज ए योगी ही वॉज एन एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी पर टाइप ऑफ योगी वी सी वेन वी रीड इज लाइफ सो तुरियानंदी इन इज प्री मोनेस्टिक डेज वॉज कॉल्ड हरिनाथ चट्टोपाध्याय Harinath Chattopadhyay his father was Chandranath Chattopadhyay and mother was Prasanna Mai he was one of the six children of his parents and the last three sons and three daughters among them he was the last and his birth was on 3rd January 1863 it was on a saturday so because it was the saturday people were worried whether his horoscope would be good but when the horoscope was seen the scholar who saw the horoscope indicated that he will be a great scholar and an austere person and a religious monk so all this became true in his future life she was born in a village called basupada the place of basus bos what whom call is Bos is called Bosu. Bosu Pada means the place where Bosus live. So that village he was born near Bag Bazar. Bag Bazar is where Udbodan, our holy mother's place, is there in Calcutta. So he was born after a Vaishnav Sankirtan. Vaishnav Sankirtan, when the Sankirtan is over, they give the prasad. They don't give the prasad in hand as we do here. they throw the prasad like that it is a some sweets they throw it mostly it is called batasha they made up of sugar something like small sugar candy pieces they just throw it among the audience each one will catch whatever comes to him or whatever falls down also they pick it up it is supposed to be very sacred prasad that is called hari loot so the hari loot it was being distributed and then devotees were receiving all the prasad at that time this uh, hari hari maharaj was born harinath chatopadhyay was born therefore his grandfather said because hari sankirtan has been done he is taking birth at this time he must be krishna himself therefore krishna yeshiche krishna has come to our house he said and krishna is called harinath he is the lord of all the gods so harinath means krishna so they named him harinath harinath chatopadhyay chatopadhyay was his title and uh, when he was hardly 3 years old a accident act, act happened in the house one rabid jackal came and this child was there outside playing and the jackal jackal was about to attack this child mother intervened so the jackal hurt the mother in a very serious way in those times rabid jackal to get the proper medicine perhaps it must have taken quite a long time in the meanwhile this lady died so he lost his mother when he was 3 years old and when he was hardly 12 years he lost his father also but his father was a very highly spiritual man when the father was passing away he was told that harinath is weeping then father said why should he weep the whole world is his and he belongs to the world harinath hari hari belongs to the world and the world belongs to hari so he need not nobody need worry about him he will the world will take care of him and he passed away so from the very young age harinath was very much inspired 
by the all-round development. So he used to attend gym- gymnasium in those times, in the time of 1860s. There was a tremendous struggle in India to throw out the British Empire. So the, all the young people in almost all the states, they would all build up their bodies, they would build up their intellect, they would read the history of the world, they would find out the ways and means how the other nations in the world became free and we should also follow that. So that, that was the millennia, that was the atmosphere at the time. So at that time, this Harinath also attended gymnasium. He, would, he practiced wrestling. He would take 100 duns, dandies push-ups, and 500 bite-ups, sit-ups. 500 duns and 500 bite-ups at a time. Very, it requires a very strong physique. So his friends used to tell him, don't overdo. If you do, you overdo, you will die. But he would not care for them. He would say, you are not boring or you are going to live eternally. You are also going to die. Nothing will happen to me. He never bothered. He took always all risks in life. So he continued to do his very vigorous exercises. And he was also lived even an austere life. Perhaps he believed that austerity is a part and parcel of spiritual life. That is true. But the extent to which each one go in austerity differs. It depends upon one's uh, strength of body, strength of mind. So, he used to take three times bath in the Ganga and he cooked his own, he cook, cooked his own food. And that was also only rice and with uh, small uh, boiled vegetables and some ghee. That's called Havishyana. Havishya is ghee. So, ghee rice with a small, small boiled vegetable. So he would sleep day after day and slept on a hard bed, almost on a cot, without any spread upon that one. And then he, he would read scriptures voraciously, the Upanishads, Gita, Chandi, and other scriptures. And then he was voracious reader of scriptures. Then the neighbors, etc., they all became very apprehensive of him. This young man of 14, 15 years old, he's practicing all these austerities. Suddenly he will not enter the householder's life. So they they told his relatives, because his elder brother was his next relative who was taking care of him. His next elder brother was about 20 years senior to him. This the elder brother was told by the neighbors, you marry him off, otherwise, you know, he will not enter the householder's life. But but they, they arranged for several parties to come to their house. And whenever they would come to their house to see the bridegroom, he, this bridegroom himself would go and talk to them all vairagya, all dispassion about the world is unreal, about God alone is real, what is there left in this world. All this after hearing, they would run away. <laughs> we would not give our daughter here. This fellow is not going to care for the whole world. Will he care, care for our daughter? All would run away. So no, no relationship settled. So he remained a free person until he met Sri Ramakrishna. And he was reading Vedanta. So always he used to read that this Atman is beyond death. Nothing can kill this Atman. So one day he was taking bath in the Ganges and so many others also were taking bath. Then suddenly one crocodile came. So as soon as they saw the crocodile, then all the people ran to the shore and shouted, come away, come away to the shore, the crocodile has come. So all ran away. So he also by a sort of a reflex, he also came away to the shore. After coming to the shore, he thought, I am a Vedantin. I have been always discussing that I am Atman. And Atman cannot be killed by anything, at least by this crocodile. Why did I also run away? Let me go back. So when all the people were standing outside and shivering, he went back into the water and finished his bath and then came back. So that was his importance for practice. Reading, he was not satisfied. He must put it into practice. 
so he would practice whatever he would read in the book then he went to he met a, met with a sadhu this sadhu was supposed to be a very spiritual man he would bless people whatever he would bless would come true so he was also asked to go to that sadhu he went to that sadhu to see who this sadhu is then naturally that sadhu that sanyasin so he asked him what do you want so many people have come here they have asked for something so what do you want he said i want only spiritual practices and vision of god i must practice spiritual practices properly and i must get the vision of god so the sadhu was surprised this young man having his full life before him has no desire for the world at all he want to say he says that i want to practice spiritual practices and get vision of god immediately he blessed him yes you will get it only you have to wait a little get to wait only for a few months only when he met sri ramakrishna first his sadguru the first meeting with sri ramakrishna took place when he was 13th or 14th year old sri ramakrishna came to one of his neighbor's house on dinanath basu and hari and gangadhar ananda swami akhandananda both of them they were eagerly waiting for sri ramakrishna he was called the paramahamsa of dakshineshwar for paramahamsa to come all were waiting they were also waiting then sri ramakrishna came and got down from the cart he would come with the horse cart so he he, he got down with hridaya's help and then as soon as he came down he went and sat in the hall and hari and gangadhar were standing from a distance then hari saw that sri ramakrishna's whole body is shining with a spiritual light he got practically he, he got the real nature of sri ramakrishna that he is a god in the very first seeing sri ramakrishna's body was shining like a shuka's body and he was in samadhi sri ramakrishna was in samadhi and later on when he came down from samadhi he sang a song saying oh oh krishna you have become kali krishna is also black and kali is also black when you were krishna yashoda used to make you dance no kali also dances so this song sri ramakrishna sang and he spoke many other teachings which uh, the haridas did not remember very first uh, sight of sri ramakrishna inspired him that here is a great person who shines with his spirituality then his second meeting was after another 3 years he was only in the first meeting he was only 13 or 14 years then up to 16th year he was doing his own spiritual practices three times ganga snan cooking his own food reading upanishads practicing the whatever water he read in the upanishads went and three years went off once after an ab- after the absence of three years he met again sri ram krishna sri ram krishna after he has, though he did not speak to him some or he, he took the information from others what is hari doing so they used to tell hari would reach vedanta and always discusses vedanta with others and practice of austerity he cooks his own food and takes three times bath in ganga then when he met sri ramakrishna after three years immediately sri ramakrishna asked him i hear you are reading the vedanta day in and day out and discussing but is it not the only one truth that is there in all the books that you read that brahman alone is real and the world is unreal is it not the only essence of all the things or anything more is there then you know hari maharaj thought correct what sri ramakrishna is correct i am spending morning till night reading the books and the the central point of everything is that world is uh, temporary and the lord is god is permanent brahman is permanent brahman is eternal and world is non eternal this is the only thing that we have to realize instead of realizing this one i am reading books from morning till evening and not coming to the sadguru immediately he thought he determined 
I will realize God. So I will have to do sadhana. If I have to do the sadhana, what are the sadhana I should know? Then I must come to Sri Ramakrishna. So the whole life took a new turn. So simple study of Vedas or Upanishads won't do. You must go to the Guru, learn the, learn the path and follow the path. So he started coming to Sri Ramakrishna and taking his teachings and trying to practice. Another day, Sri Ramakrishna spoke on God's grace. Without his grace, Sri Ramakrishna said, no one can realize that lust and lucre, that is this world, is unreal. Nobody can realize and give up this world as uh, uh, temporary, as uh, not, long, lo- not long lasting. God alone is real. This truth can never occur in his mind. So however much you read, but God's grace alone can take you beyond this maya. That's what it said in Bhila Gita also. Devi shesha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya mame vaye prapadyante maya metam tarantite. Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, this say, maya is mine. It is my power. Without my grace, that power will not leave you. It will be always obstructing your path of God realization. Those who take shelter under me alone can cross this maya and get the real God realization. Same thing. So Sri Ramakrishna was telling, without the grace of God, no one can cross this maya, this attraction to lust and lucre, which we call as unreal. One can never feel it is real and real. If it is not unreal, then why should we leave it? So we cling on to it. All of us who are drowned in the worldliness, we believe that the world is true. And why should we believe? So we, we are made to believe like that because God has not removed our ajnana or uh, our ignorance. So Sri Ramakrishna said, first grace of God is the most important thing in uh, spiritual life. You may do all the sadhanas, but the finally, when God's grace comes, your sadhana will succeed and we will have the God realization. So Sri Ramakrishna sang in front of all. After telling this, one cannot get over this lust and attraction to lust and lucre without the grace of God. So he, he was uh, referring to an incident in Ramayana. Ramayana, this Kusha and Lava, they tied Sri, Ra- Sri Ramachandra himself. When the Ashwamedha horse was there, they had tied the horse. So they defeated everybody. Lakshmana was also defeated. Anuman was also defeated. This Lava and Kusha. Then Rama himself came. Who are these fellows who have defeated all my people? Let me go on. Because unless that horse is released, the Ashwamedha Yajna is not complete. So Rama himself comes. So they bound Rama himself. They were so for Rama's children only. So he is his own self in another form. So they bound Rama himself. Though they were very happy. They were about to go and tell Mother, Mother, Rama himself you have bound. <laughs> so the poet says at that time, Are kushi lav, korish ki gaurav. Why are you proud about tying Sri Ram- Ramachandra? Unless Sri Ramachandra himself has allowed himself to be tied, could he have tied? So he himself, after all, his own children he knows. So let them tie and have enjoyment. So he himself allowed you to tie. That's why you could tie him. You could not have tied him. So he sang that song. So this, and when he was singing, Sri Ramakrishna shed tears of joy that God's grace is on everyone, like on Lava and Kusha, on our, in our case also, God blesses with his grace and we can see, we see him as the tied Sri Ram, Ramachandra. We can also see God. God gives us his God realization. So when, he, when Hari heard about this one, he, it went deep into his heart that God's grace alone can get this spiritual success. So, he always thought afterwards, God's grace can be easily got if you call on, call on him as mother. So, Hari Maharaj became a great worshipper of mother. He was an Advaitin, you know, in all his other uh, sadhanas. But 
as far as god is concerned he would always consider god as mother always he would say mother mother and he was devoted to mother aspect of god so he says god's grace alone can get this spiritual success we will see in his in many incidents in his life whenever we meet with difficulty mother do you will it like this all that let your will be done he always calls on god as mother one day he was sitting before sri ram krishna and sri ram krishna was talking about the different obstacles to life spiritual life he was telling that lust is a great spiritual obstacle then immediately hari, hari asked him sir how can lust go away how can we get rid of lust then sri ram krishna said why should it go away turn the direction of lust towards god so lust is the desire so you are desiring the worldly things so it is called lust then when you turn it towards god it becomes bhakti love for god so the power is the same so when it flows downwards we call it lust when it flows up, upwards towards god we call it as bhakti he said why should you give up lust lust is the desire the power to love love god turn the love to god and this lust itself will become bhakti of god you will realize god so this was another great teaching give a turn to the different forces in your in, a, in your personality we need not we cannot destroy anything only give a new newer turn so that is why many great sinners have become saints because to become great sinner he has got power in him so if he can become a great sinner he can become a great saint also so they turn the different direction the great masters who take them under their protection they turn their mind to a higher direction so all that was going in a dip, opposite direction is turned towards god and they become great saints as in the case of sri ram krishna also girish chandra ghosh was a sinner he became a great saint because he had that power in him so it had it had lost its direction correct when correct direction was given he became a saint also sri ram krishna advised hari look at women as emblems of divine mother so when you see any any womanly form you think oh, mother herself is there in that form a girl or a elderly person any female form you think that mother divine mother herself is in all this form then that a lustful thoughts will leave you he who hates women sri ram krishna said runs into their snare to hate and love they are the same force but their directions are different you you hate because you love something else i love x so if somebody they stop my going to x then i hate him this fellow stops me from going to x therefore i hate it the hate comes out of love only so hate and love are the two aspects of the same force that's why sri ram krishna said don't hate women otherwise you will run into their snare so think of all women as the emblems of divine mother once sri hari said i experience high state of spiritual uh, feelings here when i am in your presence he is telling sri ram krishna but when i leave this place and go to calcutta my that, that mood comes down i become an ordinary man how should how can i help it then sri ram krishna says why should you you will never you should never forget the lord you are always think that you are his servant i am hari das you are hari hari nath so you always think so i am the hari das i am servant of god if you continue to remember this one so whether you are in calcutta whether you are here your mind will not come down but harinath says but i don't know that i am god's servant always i am not aware of it then sri ramakrishna says truth does not depend upon your being aware or not being aware it is true you are god's servant is true so whether you are aware or not go on trying to remember what one time it becomes a constant thought i am a child of god i am a servant of god then all this uh, mind coming down etc will stop then another day 
ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಡ ರಿಡೆಮ್ಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ ಸೈಕಲ್ ಸೊ ಹರಿ ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಸಲ್ವೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ವಾಸ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಅಟೈನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಗೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಟ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ವೈ ಡ್ಯೂ ಸೇ ಸೋ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಅಟೈನ್ ಸಾಲ್ವೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಹೈಯರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ನರೇಂದ್ರನಾಥ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿನ್ ನರೇಂದ್ರನಾಥ್ ಸೇಡ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಇಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಶಿಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಹೈಯರ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ದೆನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಟು ಸೀ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಓಪನ್ ಐಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಹೈಯರ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಮರ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಸೊ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಟು ಹರಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸೇ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಫಾರ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೀನ್ ಫೆಲೋಸ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಹೌ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಐಡಿ ಹೈ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಸೇ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಆರ್ ಮೀನ್ ಫೆಲೋಸ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈಸ್ ಡೈಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ದೇ ವಾಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಡ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟಿಮೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಲಿವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶೋ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಟು ರೀಚ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಪೊಟೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಪೊಟೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟು ಅಚೀವ್ ದ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ವ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ದಿ ಗೇವ್ ದಿ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಮದರ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಐಡಿಯಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಅಪ್ ಹರಿ ಟು ಟೋ ಹಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಹರಿ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಮೈ ಮದರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇದ್ ದೇರ್ ಮದರ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಮದರ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ಇನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಫಾರಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ಮೀ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ಸಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ so this is the real ideal and simply talking about meditation and samadhi it is only a mean ideal when compared to this so hari chose to follow this path through ad- to advaita and coming down from advaita to serve the whole world sri ramakrishna was one day eating and then there were so many items on his on his plate Sri Ramakrishna would take one and put it into his mouth, a little of it. And then he would put it down and he would take another item. One, two, three, four, all items he was putting into his mouth and keeping out a piece of it. Then he was every time telling, I want to bring my down, mind down. It is not coming down at all. So hey, whatever I give, so it, the mind says it, doesn't, it not, does not taste at all. It does not relish it. So it is not coming down at all. then hari mara saw what tremendous control he has over his tongue a person who has tremendous control over his tongue he must be a god realized person only only god realized persons have lost all taste for the world everything is for
Sri Ramchandra, Sri Ramkrishna, Sir, how are you? Then Sri Ramkrishna naturally told him, Oh, I am suffering so much, I can't eat anything. But Harinath was seeing in his divine vision, he was seeing Sri Ramkrishna as full of joy, as Satchidananda, as the, as the Brahman itself, with full of infinite joy, with infinite power, infinite immortal life. He was seeing Sri Ramkrishna as the divine Brahman himself. So again and again Sri Ramkrishna said, so I am suffering, I am not able to eat anything. But Harinath, after hearing everything, said, Sir, I know you are the ocean of Satchidananda. You are the ocean of existence and knowledge, bliss. You are the ocean of Brahman. As soon as he said, Sri Ramakrishna started laughing and then said, This rascal has found me out and, and my real state. So he has found me out in my real state. Sri Ramakrishna was very much pleased. <coughs> then Swami Vivekananda asked once Harinath. Swami Vivekananda also used to see Ram, come to Sri Ramakrishna. Vivekananda and Harinath became great friends. We know later on Swami Vivekananda took Harinath to Riyananji to West also to preach. So Swami Vivekananda once asked Hari, what do you think of Sri Ramakrishna? Then Harinath said, Oh, he is full of all the blessed qualities, all the blessed Kalyana Gunamaya. He is full of all blessed qualities of great people. All good qualities are the name. Ananta Kalyana Guna. He is like that uh, Tulsi Das song, Asita Giri Sabam Syat Kajjalam Sindhu Patre. Tulsi Das wrote a poem of Shiva saying, if the whole sea is a ink pot, and if the Kalpataru itself is the pen, if Saraswati Artha start writing the glories of Shiva, and the whole the, the paper on which she writes is the whole earth, even then his names could not be completed. His glories could not be completed. Such is the glory of Shiva and our Sri Ramakrishna Artha is like that. So Hari is told like that. Then Swamiji said, you see, I, I consider him as personification of the infinite love. <coughs> Whatever he is, he is, he is only love personified. Love anywhere you see, it is Sri Ramakrishna's love. So these two people were discussing Sri Ramakrishna like that. Then one day, he was discussing with Swami Vivekananda that how to realize God. Then Sri Swami Vivekananda told him, you see, realizing God through austerities is impossible. The, the scriptures themselves say, Yame Vaishavrinute Tena Labhya. So the God is available to only those whom He chooses. That means unless God showers His grace, you cannot have God realization. But does that mean that we should not practice the spiritual practices? No, you must practice. Because through practice, you get the grace of God. God comes to know that you are sincerely struggling to realize Him. Then He will come and reveal Himself to you. So in that sense, the spiritual practices only can attract the attention of God to you. When God is convinced that you are sincerely calling on Him, then He will come out of His grace. He will give you an infinite fruit for your finite sadhana. Our sadhana our, all our uh, uh, austerities are only limited. Maybe 10 years austerity, 15 years austerity, or 100 years austerity maximum. But the fruit that you get is God Himself. It is infinite. Can you get 100 years of limited uh, price? An infinite thing. An infinity cannot be got by finite, any finite thing. So the infinity can be got only by the grace of God. So he says, God's grace can be attracted through sadhana. And it is it God's grace that gives you real moksha or freedom. So that is how we understood. The grace of God impressed Harinath again. So in 1886, Sri Ramakrishna passed away. Then Harinath assumed the name Turiyananda after taking sannyas. 
in the Baranagar Mutt. Then in 1887, he went for Bhiksha to his own elder brother after taking sannyas. His elder brother was so good, he blessed him with all his heart. May you succeed in your, in your life. And of course, Turiyananda did succeed. And he went on pilgrimage to all the various places in the Uttarakhand, Rishikesh, Gangotri. Then at Rajpur near Dehradun, he was being pursued by the CIDs. At those times, the British people were very much afraid of these monks because the, the revolutionaries dressed themselves as monks and they would go everywhere and then do activities against the British government to throw it out. Therefore, whenever they would find a monk, they would be behind to find out who he is, what he is doing. So one CID was accompanying him. Without, his, without uh, uh, Harinath's knowledge, Turiyaranji's knowledge, one day this CID, he said he found he is not caring for him at all. He, he does not bother that the CID is with him. He goes on in his own way. He meditates, he takes bath, he took, takes his rest without caring that somebody is with him. Not even asked him, who are you? Then CID went and asked him, Do you, are you not afraid of the CID? He said, I am not afraid of Yama also, why should I be afraid of CID? He told him. Then this CID became a great devotee of Turiyananda. Then, like that, he did a lot of pilgrimages. In 1893, he was going to Bombay. On the train, he met Swami Vivekananda. That was a little earlier than May 31st, when Swamiji left for Chicago. So, a few days earlier, so they met in the train. Then, Swami Vivekananda told him that what is happening in the Chicago Parliament religions is all for this. For me alone, you will see after a after very short time, you will verify this one. All that preparation is, is for me. And it happened so. When the Parliament of Religions opened, they wanted to propagate Christianity, but Hinduism could propagate it. Hinduism became the world religion at that time. Before that, they did not know at all that the Vedanta was the world religion. So that happened. Swamiji revealed that to him, to Turiyanan Swami. Then they both arrived in Bombay. So they were there for two or three days. One group of uh, business people were there and then Ma Swamiji was staying. They all wanted to hear some spiritual talk. So Swamiji said, Turiyanandji, you please speak about spirituality. Then he spoke about vairagya, about renunciation, about dispassion to the world in such strong terms. Then in the end, Swami Vivekananda told him, you are speaking to householders. You should have talked about some bhakti and how, how they will get the grace of God. How can they practice all the renunciation that you have talked about? That Turiyanji said, because you were there, so I was inspired to speak about renunciation. So I went on talking. So I forgot that I was speaking to the householders. So once in 1890, at Vrindavan, he was with Swami Brahmananji. Brahmananji and Turiyanji, they did tapasya together for a number of years in Vrindavan. So when they were in Vrindavan, Swami Turiyananji used to go and beg food for both of them. One day he could not get anything except from only roti, only some, the Indian bread as they say. So he got only roti, which was also not very good. So he, when he gave it to Swami Brahmananji, he felt so bad and so sad, he started shedding tears. He said, Brother, how much Sri Ramakrishna loved you and how he gave you the best of sweets, how he gave the best of pious, how he get up, gave all the best of things, but I could not get you a good bhiksha. I could give, get you only this dry roti. So he started shedding tears. He had a great heart. Then one day he had a vision of Radha in Vrindavan. So he first thought Radha's uh, tresses he saw. Then from a distance he thought some peacock may be sitting there. Then afterwards when he observed, it was Radha Rani standing there. 
so he had a, he had a vision of radha then one day in vrindavan itself a thought came to him what is this i am not doing anything to the world so many other my own brothers like swami ji so he is preaching to the world so many people are being helped and then along with him other akandanand ji is there he is also doing some relief work so i am not doing anything at all i am only meditating meditating that's all i am useless to the world as he was thinking then he went into sleep then he got a vision then he says that is atman is is occupying the whole universe is atman is expanded everywhere so he is the infinite atman so when he came down suddenly it flashed to him as if you know god was telling telling him this knowledge of the atman you are giving to the world by looking at you people will conv- get convinced that atman is true atman is real this is the message that you are giving to the world you are not keeping quiet you are doing a great duty to the world great help to the world so this is the message he gave to the world all through his life whoever saw him he got inspired to lead a spiritual life in saurashtra he he fell ill but then he suddenly thought i must go and take some medicine but he remembered that all his uh, previous illnesses he had, he had always thought only the, the, the water of ganga is my medicine and god himself is my doctor this was his uh, motto so why i should give up that motto now so he forgot the doctor and himself remained alone only to ganga water he became all right and then his fearlessness was next door little swami ji fearless means absolutely daredevil like that once you know he was going for bath in uttarkashi so he was going and then he found a tiger sitting just a few yards away from him it has killed one animal it is just eating the animal so he has to go in front of that one to take bath he did not even stop he was looking at the tiger passed in front of it went away and took bath came back in the same way that was eating so he went in front of it such a daring person no fear at all another time he was uh, he, he was meditating in the evening he was staying in a cave the cave has no doors so only it can give you shelter only to help take shelter from the rain and the sun you there there is no door for that so he was sitting in a open cave and meditating then in the nearby village there was a big shout saying oh a tiger has come tiger has come it was in tehri a tiger has come tiger has come close your doors and protect yourself so all people closed their door where was the door there was no door at all here so he could have ran away from somewhere or climbed up on a tree and protected himself he said what is there to get protected i am the atman he simply sat there and went on with his meditation the tiger came and it went away nothing happened to him so he was fearlessness personified like that so in 1899 when swami vivekananda went to west for the second time so he knew that that was almost his end was coming so some other disciples also direct disciples must take up the work of preaching so he wanted turiyanand ji to go with him first of all turiyanand ji would not agree no no i am quite happy here because he was a god realized person he is immersed in his Im- Im- infinite joy why should he go to west so he said what is there in the west you are a great preacher you have preached already so you can go and do but i feel my work is here itself so i don't want to go however much swami ji said he would not agree at last swami ji embraced him and started shedding tears hari should i die alone working and fighting will you not give me helping hand when he shed tears then turiyanand ji could not control himself all right all right i'll come with you and he spent about 3 years about 33 months almost 3 years in america preaching vedanta it was a great work In the beginning now we know in america everybody is welcome india is a very respected country at that time 
India was not a free country. It was a slavish country and the British, they had a very poor opinion of the Indians because they have no will because there are so many crores, 30 or 40 crores being ruled by one and a half, two, two crores of British people. All are cowards. This was the idea they had. And also, secondly, India is a place of charlatans, of magicians, snakes. So these missionaries had spread all that. In the, with this background, so to go to America and then make disciples of the Americans and spread the message of Vedanta, it was not an ordinary thing. So Swami did it and his, his followers also did it. And one of them was Swami Turiyananji. So they arrived in, first went by London, then to New York, and then he stayed in New York for quite some time. He helped uh, Abedananda also there. Then Swamiji one day told him, you forget India, you demonstrate to, through your life how to live Vedanta. And that, that was what Swami Turiyananji did. So he had one, one disciple, Atulananda Ji, Gurudas Maharaj. Gurudas Maharaj was a, was a man, Dutchman. So he, this, he was settled in America. And he had seen Swamiji, Abhedananji. We also have seen him. So great uh, Swami. So he, he was with uh, Turiyananji for quite some time. Both were walking in the streets of New York. So New York is full of skyscraper buildings, even at that time. So Atulananji was showing to Turiyananji, Swamiji, look at that building, how tall it is. Then immediately Turiyananji said, what is there in the tallness? It is only one brick placed over other. So what is there to do? Don't forget God looking at this building. His mind was so one-pointed, it would not move from this God, at, even for a moment. So similarly, once Atulananji told, just to bring down the mind of Turiyananji, his mind was so tuned, always in Vedanta, always in Brahman, always in talking about Samadhi, just to bring it down to a little lower level, he suggested, Sir, shall we go and hear a very good classical music that is going on? He is a very famous musician. We can hear for him for an hour or two. Immediately, Turiyanji reacted. Atula, at, at, uh, uh, Gurudas, don't allow your mind to go here and there. If you just allow the mind to go here and there, it will, once up, it will run away from you. You will never be able to realize anything. Hold on to that ideal. No music, no light thing. Hold, hold on to the highest ideal. So that was he, his life, and you'd inspire like that. One day he was walking along the New York. Then he was talking about how the person who is practicing spiritual austerities, how he should be stern and how should be, he should be determined to go out of this bondage. As he was talking about the strong will of that aspirant, he said, break the cage, break the cage, take a big leap like a lion, break the cage and come out of it. Nirgachati Jagajjalati Pinjaradeva Kechari He was repeating a text from Sanskrit. The man of God realization, the aspirant to God realization, he will be like that lion which breaks the cage and comes out. However strong the cage may be, it has got equal power. It determines either I will die inside or I will break this and go and become free. I will not be alive in a, in a a bond, bonded state, it should be the attitude. So that is how he taught. So I have, when Swamiji asked Swami Turiyananji to start an ashram called the Shanti Ashram, one uh, American lady donated 160 acres of land. It was an arid land, so in near San Francisco. So it is, San, it is about 40 miles from San Francisco. We have all seen it, it is there even now under us. So this 160 acres of arid land, it was away from the nearest railway station by 30, mi 30 miles. And he, the nearest railway station was 30 miles. And then afterwards, from there, San Francisco, it was another 40 miles. And in that arid land, Swamiji said, you go 
and start an ashram there and start the first Vedanta center. Hoist the flag of Vedanta in the West. He went there with a number of disciples, some ladies and some gents. And then when he went there 40 miles from and he had to go by horse cart. Then 30 miles you have to, no, you have to go by the train up to the 40 miles. Then from there you have to go by horse cart another 30 miles. And the nearest water, port, portable water was three, three miles. That means four and a half kilometers to walk to get a pitcher of water, portable water, in those times. But Turiyanji took up this hard job and then ran the ashram for almost one, 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 one and a half years. One and a half years he ran the ashram. Once, you know, he ran out of money. Only these disciples, some 10, 12 or 13, they were to contribute money. So they were all not very rich people, but they were all very sincere. So one day, the money was coming to an end and so many other inconveniences were there and there was no portable water. The place was full of snakes and scorpions and though no medical help was available, in that place one day, Swami Turiyananda felt very much exhausted. So he was telling, what will happen, what will happen? Then hearing him saying like this, one lady, he is one of his disciples, so she immediately remarked, her name was Mrs. Agnes Stanley. She answered, why do you lose faith in Divine Mother, Swamiji? You have been teaching us the faith in Divine Mother. Why do you leave? And then she took out her handkerchief, which was full of uh, American dollars, the gold, gold coins. He poured it before him. So you use this one and Mother will bring more money. So, Turiyananji was so much impressed by her. So, oh, you have so much faith. So, you will be called from today, Shraddha. So, her name became Shraddha. So, everybody used to call her Shraddha. So, then they had to build their own buildings. They had to build their own to toilets. And all the carpentry work had to be done by themselves. Then there, from morning till evening, spiritual practice would be there. Sanskrit chantings were there, meditation was there, and of course household work they had to manage themselves. Raja was taught, Gita was taught. Then again meditation up to night, morning till night, every day this was there. So one day, Turiyanji was bitten by a venomous insect. It is a jungle, you what? Insects are nobody knows. One big insect came, and when he was meditating, it just bit him on his hand whole hand got swollen up. It was a very poisonous one. So all the people got worried. No doctor is there. So doctor to fetch him, we have to go 40 miles. So how to fetch the doctor? So, but Turiyanji was quiet. He was, he was, he was uh, calm, quiet, meditating with the hand completely swollen. Somehow or other, suddenly one doctor stepped in there. How did the doctor step in? He read in some paper that some uh, retreat is going on here, that Americans are all practicing Vedanta. I wanted to come, I was thinking, today I thought I must go. So I walked all the 40 miles and come here and he had a medical kit with him. Immediately he dressed Turiyananji and the swelling went away and he got, he, he was well treated at that time. So similarly, see, all the other devotees he used to tell, everything that you do, you should do in the name of God. Even when you cook, you cook for God. Therefore, when you are cooking, don't taste. Do just uh, in your imagination, correct amount of salt or correct amount of uh, sugar you must add. And without tasting, you must offer it to Sri Ramakrishna. Afterwards, you eat it. Just as we do in India, he taught them all those uh, niceties of spiritual life. Sri Ramakrishna used to say one day, he says, he told those white people, Sri Ramakrishna used to say that I have so many white devotees who are all pure in their heart. So they will all, they are all, they, they were all worshiping me, worshiping me. I saw that in a vision. And he says, I know that you are those white people whom Sri Ramakrishna saw. So you are all those white people. 
so they were all very much delighted one lady among them she said oh swami to be one among the selected people by sri ram krishna i don't deserve she said deservingness or deserving undeservingness is there is nothing like that for god god showers his grace on everybody so you may be undeserving you may think but god thinks you are deserved so all of you are those white people whom sri ram krishna blessed at that time so this lady who said i am undeserving after some time she passed away taking the name of sri ram krishna till the end till the end she was taking his name and passed away so deservingness has come she was thinking it is under undeserved so nearly 18 months like this in shanti ashrama three years in just spent and then he decided there was one lady who complained to him one day sir my husband does not like me to come here and then spend my time in learning vedanta he is very cross with me then he said then you bring your husband once i will talk to him no no he will not come but he will simply gives me a lot of trouble at home then he said you take me to your home i will meet your husband one day no no swami you please don't come he may insult you very badly that will be too much for me to bear he said you you take me you will see what will happen anyway she took him he just went and the husband was there and then he just went and shook hands with him that is all after shaking hands the man became transformed he did not talk anything against vedanta became a great disciple of swami turiyananda such power he had so much of spirituality by touch he could impart spirituality he became a very very good devotee of vedanta then after spending about 3 years like this turiyan decided to come back to india but he had a vision of kali kali said don't go back you continue to be here more disciples will come this will continue this will become a very big work you don't go he said no i must go and see swami vivekananda it was 1902 and it was may or so so he said i must go and see vivekananda i must go then mother kali became very angry with him she turned her head away and disappeared then turiyanji told gurudas that brahmachari you book my ticket you see i saw kali not being a agreeable to me going to india i have angered her so but now it is too late so whatever has to come out from her anger i have to suffer but anyway i am going to see swami ji he came to india as he landed in rangoon he heard that swami vivek and that passed away he could not meet swami ji also and he had angered kali and came away but he never bothered about it after all he is my mother she is my mother if she becomes angry what is there to be we worried about a child he does not care for mother's anger at all later we angry afterwards she will be all right he fully knows that was the attitude of swami turiyananda he did not care for the anger of mother also then he came when swami ji was not there he didn't like to stay in belmat also he spent all his years almost up to the 1922 when he passed away in different places in brindaban in mayavati in almora then kashi to so last he comes down to kashi and he stays there and durga puja was going on at kankal then he was the chandi patak he he knew chandi by heart he knew whole of tulsi ramayan by heart whole of chandi by heart bhagavad gita by heart all the upanishads by heart so there so chandi part he would finish in one hour which people take four hours and he would just it's all it was all memory his memory power was so much so he he was in chandi chandi part at durga puja he did like that then he came back to kashi where he lived there for a few years at and then in the meanwhile he went goes to puri in puri a very interesting incident happens he was just going to temple of jagannath when he was about to climb this stairs to the jagannath temple he found sri ram krishna coming down from inside the temple so when he met him on the half way then he forgot that sri ram krishna is no more in the physical body 
he thought he is in the physical body. Then he fell at his feet, and after quite some time, he lifted his head and saw Sri Ramakrishna has disappeared. Then he came to know that Sri Ramakrishna is permanently here as Jagannath. He is getting the worship through Jagannath. So Sri Ramakrishna is Jagannath. So he used to tell others, "I saw Sri Ramakrishna as Jagannath." So like that, when he was in Jagannath, he was uh, little, rather a little ill. With all that, he would regularly go and visit Jagannath Temple once, twice, thrice like that. So he had his sevaks also. One of his sevaks was Swami Shankaranandji. So I mean, later on, he became Shankaranandji. So at that time, he was called Amulya Maharaj. So Amulya was Brahmachari. He was serving him. So when he would find uh, Swami Brahmanandji, so when he found Turiyanandji, he is taking rest. He said, "Let me go and have darshan of Jagannath." So he would go he quickly. That place to Jagannath was only half, half or three fourth kilometer. He would run and have darshan and come. So one day, so he he had left the room. So he was walking very briskly, immediately to go and have darshan. Suddenly he found Turiyanandji was sleeping. When he left him, he has overtaken him. He is walking in front of him. I said, "How did he go in front of me?" He was there, least sleeping when I left him. How did he go? And then afterward, both of them met Darshan and came back. And another day, it was a very important day. Then he left Turiyanandji in his room when he was taking rest. Then Amulya would go, go and have Darshan of Jagannath. He went once, twice, thrice, three times. He had Darshan. So in the evening, he went to Swami Turiyanandji. Maharaj, today is a great day. So when you are resting, I could go three times. And had darshan of Jagannath. Then Turiyanandji said, "I had five times darshan." He says. <laughs> so that was Turiyanand Swami. He could do impossible, possible. How he did it, God alone knows. So at last, he was affected with uh, diabetes, with gangrene. So gangrene, when it, was, when it was there, gangrene had to be operated. He would say, "I would not take." Uh, Any anesthesia. So without anesthesia, he was operated. When he was operated without anesthesia, Swami Yatishwaranandji. He was a he was a young Swami. He was with him. So he, when the operation was going on, when he saw bu- small bucketfuls of blood was coming down from his back, so they would take out bucketfuls of blood and keep it aside. He saw the first bucketful and then Swami Yatishwaranandji swooned and swooned and then. Operation theater. Then he had to be brought out. But this Swami, without any anesthesia, is sitting calmly. When the, all the operation went, then he dressed, they dressed him. He came out. That was his patience. He could withstand any amount of pain because he disidentified himself with the body. He felt that he was the pure soul. He was no body at all. That was his greatness. He could demonstrate it. Once when he was in Rishikesh. He was talking about the Atman. So, Nainanda Hati Pava Kaha. He said, the, the Gita says, this Atman cannot be burned. Then one of the other Swamis, of the other Sampradaya, he challenged him. Oh, if uh, Atman cannot be burned, if you say you are the Atman, then you put your hand into the fire. He immediately put his hand into the fire. Fire was burning in front of them. They were all talking. He put his hand. Hand started burning. He, other swamis pulled him out, but he did not bother at all. So that was the Turiyan and Swami living always in that highest state. Then, when the last day came, so he four days early, one week earlier, he announced in Kashi. He was in Kashi. He told all the sevaks who, who were serving him, and the doctors also who were serving him, all of you enjoy your time with me for one week. Afterwards, I will not be there. One week earlier, he is announcing. Then, on the day, previous day, he said, "So tomorrow is the last day." Akandananji was there. Then he met Akandananji. Akandananda, tomorrow is my last day. And last day when it came, he said, "You make me sit. I want to meditate and give up my body." They said, "No, no, no. You should." Doctor was asked, "They are not to make you sit." Are you with the pranas are leaving? I am seeing. So he himself made his body straight, hands straight, and legs straight, 
and then gave up his body uttering jai gurudev jai gurudev and brahma satyam jagat satyam satye satyam pratishthitam he said before he passed away he uttered this great mantra as it were brahma satyam brahman is real jagat satyam this world also is real sri ramakrishna's message the brahman also is real world also is real satye satyam pratishthitam the, the satya brahman is established in this world and the world is established in brahman he uttered this great truth and then said that jai sri ramakrishna jai ramakrishna two times then jai gurudeva jai gurudeva he said and gave up his body like a hero so his life has been a great lesson for people who would want to know what spirituality practical spirituality is he was a living spiritual ideal model so many incidents are in his life so we are very fortunate that by the grace of sri ramakrishna we are able to reminisce a few of them may we pray to sri ramakrishna holy mother swami ji and swami turiyanand ji to bless us all so that we can adopt some of the spiritual steps they have taken in their life and achieve success in our life also so that we may also be blessed by the grace of god may sri ramakrishna help us all niranjanam nityam anantarupam भक्तानुकंपाधृत विग्रह वै ईशावतारम परमेशम्यम तम रामकृष्ण शिस्